basically how this system works is this is a modulating hot water tank so what happens is is that there's a temperature control setting over there when we did our, our our load calculations on this to figure out what we needed okay we figure out how much heat we need in the house and then instead of messing with the furnace or putting a different size furnace in all we have to do is adjust the water temperature okay we just this was installed uh, in the beginning of this winter, this was one of the coldest uh, winters in 40 or 50 years. I had the water temperature set at 125 degrees. I never had a, a, I normally set my thermostat when I'm at home somewhere between 70 and 72 degrees. I never had a problem maintaining temperature. Not only was I able to heat the house when it was five below zero, I was able to take an hour shower, do a load of laundry, a load of wash. How this generally works is this thing will kick on and it'll heat the water. If you have one if you have one faucet on or if this is just running it might only run at 11 to 40,000 BTUs. As you start adding stuff to the system this will ramp up all the way up to 200,000 BTUs. Now at some point, this is a Georgian, there's a couple bathrooms, it's a small house. If this isn't a bigger house, at some point if you max out on the domestic hot water side this in the circuit board will give priority to your hot water. So temporarily it'll make sure your shower doesn't get cold and then when you turn the shower off it'll kick this circuit back on because you can you can always go 10 20 minutes sooner or later somebody's going to turn off a faucet and or turn off a sink or stop filling the tub this has never since i've been here been running at full capacity it was maxed out i ran out of hot water so the nice thing about this is it saves you a ton of money all things being equal the problem with this system is you never run on hot water, so you end up taking a two-hour shower instead of a ten-minute one. So <laughs> it doesn't cost you more, but uh, the comfort level is amazing. So basically, how this works is you can see these these copper pipes. You've got your you got expansion tank here. Uh, this is just when you put in this type of system. This is recommended. This is uh, just because whenever you're heating water, you want to have an expansion tank just to, as a safety measure. You have, your, you have your supply and you have your return water, okay? This is just for the hydronic air handler. The other one actually goes up, tees off, and goes and supplies the rest of the domestic hot water. So this can run just in this loop without running throughout the rest of the house. And so the water temperature is set at 125 degrees. What happens is when there's a call for heat, and we're going to run this and we're going to... Billy's going to take some temperature readings and show you the temperature readings. When basically what happens is, is that when this kicks on, the water's get heated at 125 degrees. It's going to run along these pipes. Okay, this has a the air, hydraulic air handler has a built-in pump into it. So I'm going to I'm going to walk over here now. I'm going to kind of explain this side of it to you. Okay, so over here on this side, you have your inlet. So this is your water in. So you got an air eliminator just like you'd have for a boiler, so it just it keeps all the air out. So you, you don't want air in there because it's going to be less efficient. You have your heated water comes in here at 125 degrees. It goes through, we're going to take this off in a second and show you. Bill, you want, you want to take that top thing off while we're here talking about it? What we're going to show you is normally on a furnace, you would see a burners. So you would see like maybe four shot burner in there, and you would see a uh, a double walled stainless steel heat exchanger. In here what you're going to see, it, it almost looks like a coil like you would have for an air conditioner, okay? But all it is is you're just running hot water through it and cycling it through. And then if you look here, this is basically, this is the heart of the technology. This is just a coil. The hot water goes through the coil. The air comes into your return through your filter and then just blows over the coils that are heated to hot water. The only difference between this is, if you had a, air, if you had a regular scorched air type system, you would have, um, you would have basically you'd have burners that would fire, and you would have a, a, um, a heat exchanger in there. Okay, this is a heat exchanger of sorts, but all the combustion is done in that little cabinet over there. It's just heated water that goes through here. So the 125 degree water comes through here. You should burn off somewhere around 30 degrees as it cycles through. So once this water is heated up to 125 degrees and is running through here, as the air blows off of it, 
it's going to pull the heat out, push it through the house. The water is going to return. It's going to be somewhere around 30 to 35 degree temp, uh, delta T is what they call it, temperature differential. So when it goes back through there, that water that's starting at about 50, 55 degrees is going to come through it at 125. But as it goes back, it's only going to have to be heated from um, somewhere from 90 to 95 degrees, right? So that's actually going to modulate. The burner is actually going to go down if nothing else is running because the water's already heated up. And now instead of having to gain 60, 70 degrees, this water as it cycles through only has to only has to gain 30 degrees. So it's going to run much more efficient, and it's going to give you a lot, a lot more excess capacity to you know run your tub, run your sink, do your dishwasher, and all that. So this is basically. This is basically the heart of it. This is the only thing that's different. A lot of people who have boilers, especially on the East Coast, this is the type of system they have. They hook up this type of system so they can have AC um, uh, in, in, in different areas, and they just run heated water through this type of hydronic coil. So again, not really reinventing the wheel, just kind of putting a couple of existing components that work really well together in a unique way. <coughs> As you can see here, Bill, you can talk about this a little bit. It's just like your 95% <coughs> high efficiency furnace. You got a circuit board here that controls your blower. It also controls um, the Taco pump here. That's what circulates the water. And when it starts circulating that water, that's what's going to make the tankless water tank activate. Um, this also has an ECM blower motor. So it's a more electrical efficient motor is compared to a traditional PSC standard motor.